What's happening? Nick Pollock here from Pitchless.com for yet another pitcher video breakdown. Uh, if you don't know me, I was a former college pitcher, pitching coach, travel baseball coach, and at Pitcherless, all I do is focus on starting pitching, talking about mechanics and approach and all that fun stuff, also for fantasy baseball as well. And here we have Zach Wheeler. Zach Wheeler, this game yesterday, obviously complete game shutout against the Milwaukee Brewers. It was phenomenal. And what we're going to do right now, we're going to look at that ninth inning. How is Wheeler still having success? What is he doing to carve up batters? I'm really, really looking forward to this. I think he's fantastic. But if you want to watch this live, by the way, do this on twitch.tv slash pitchlist every single Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. where you can request who I cover. So let's get straight to it. This is Zach Wheeler uh, against the Brewers. Uh, if you don't know his his repertoire here, we got fastballs galore, okay? Fastballs in and out, mostly four seamers, sometimes some sinkers in there, but he's going to be coming up in upper 90s. While you're going to see around 90 miles per hour, a slider, it sometimes has cut action to it. Sometimes it's more aggressive breaking ball movement uh, with that slider. And sometimes you'll see a big curveball, maybe getting a first pitch strike, sometimes trying to put away a lefty um, and a rare changeup. Mostly, Zach Wheeler gets it done with a really good fastball command that batters just cannot handle. And yeah, he really took advantage of that pitch against the Brewers. So we're going to start. Here's the first pitch here um, against Billy McKinney. And he sets up. I mean, look at that. This is this is perfect. This is 95 on the black on the corner. If you listen to my podcast, uh, that's perfect. 95 sets the tone of it, right? So, and the thing is, now that you throw 95 down and away like this, what you can do is anything. You can go back there, make make him hit that one. You just hit that as a pitcher. You can probably hit it again. I mean, it does set up the inside corner, especially if you're able to hit another fastball away. And I can see a scenario now that, like, he throws it actually a little bit up. Uh, McKinney fouls it off. And all of a sudden, they can just come in with that cutter or slider inside and just eat him alive. So we'll see where he goes. But it looks like another fastball away. He does and he misses it, and that's okay. But now he has McKin uh, McKinney leaning a little bit away. And you imagine now 1-1, one, one, you, you kind of change it up. You can probably come back inside. So that was the cutter here. Okay, 91. You can kind of see he got a little bit underneath it. He didn't quite extend out with the wrist uh, to finish that pitch down. Um, I'm wondering if I can get the frame of which he does this. Uh, you can kind of see him release. Let's watch that. I. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it just, it just gets slightly underneath. It goes up, and it's a 91. He misses. He's a little frustrated about that one, especially for being the first inside pitch. I mean, you actually kind of see McKinney react a little stronger um, than you expect. He's going. He's sitting up because he's thinking, oh, no, this is about to hit me. But this actually is kind of close to the to the zone here, and that is along the inside corner. So he's more information about, hey, he's looking away now. He's getting beat on inside. So something to consider. Uh, I would imagine Wheeler's going to go away now to set up that outs inside corner again, and that's what we're going to get. And that's a ball down, and that's okay. That's an out. But here's the thing: this pitch is a little closer uh, to the wheelhouse of a lefty. Generally, the death zone against left-handed hitters is this quadrant, like right here. And I want to say it's really small. It's a small margin for error. Where once he's starting getting it farther away from the actual strike zone. Uh, is where it's harder for the barrel just to drop. So this one is, yes, a little bit at the, on the end of the bat, but McKinney is looking away, and actually it's not so close to his hands that this, this bat is extended, which means that McKinney can push this to left field. So this is actually a really good piece of hitting, and it's solid contact that, uh, fortunately, McCutcheon is right there for the out. Um, that's uh, so, so you think, like, Nick, that's a, not even a strike, and it's a 2-1, and he's swinging on that. If that's farther away, that's that's not going to be hit as well. Uh, it's, it's just those little things. If you're going to go down in the zone, uh, you can't get it that close. Uh, sometimes they can get that barrel on it. I'm um, sorry. So, oh, oh, here he's going to try and jam Lorenzo Cain. Gets it inside a little too far inside. Probably a little bit frustrated about it. I would imagine he's going to try and go back there again and hit the spot. Nice. 98. Oh, so as I'm talking about, that's kind of the, the same zone for right-handers as left-handers. Left-handers are, are just notoriously a little bit better at it uh, once you get inside on them there. But that one had some ride to it at 98, and Kane just could not handle it. Now, here's the thing. Typically, when you see this being uh, controlled or like established by a pitcher, it normally means you can throw a secondary pitch that goes down and in further. 
Unfortunately, Wheeler doesn't really have that skill set. That would be a changeup if you're a right-hander. He doesn't have that changeup in his repertoire. So what you're probably going to see is him avoid this moving forward, maybe pull up a little bit more. Maybe now he's going to go away with a, with a cutter. But I don't think we'll actually see Wheeler try to get this pitch down here again um, because I think Kane can probably, you know, if he's expecting it in any way, he can probably catch up to it. So let's see. Are they going to go to the same spot? No, it did come up a little bit. I mean, even though the glove was down, I don't really actually think like Wheeler was trying to get it there. As you can see, it naturally came up farther. And look, you got to swing on that. I'm actually really shocked. Like, that was just like the first pitch. But I think because Wheeler showcased that he is going inside, Kane is being more aggressive on inside fastballs. And then he had the ride uh, coming in that Kane just didn't expect and he fouled that off. So, so now that you have 1-2, I'm not even going to look at the catcher now. I'm not going to cheat. 1-2. You got to think that Wheeler's going to throw, say, a secondary pitch away. Because that's just inside now. You can maybe even spot a fastball away at this point. Um, as Kane has showcased that he's looking inside for heaters. So if you throw away, you might be able to sneak one by uh, for a strikeout. So they are going away. Let's, I wonder if it's a slider. It kind of looks like it's a slider approach. I hope, what hap I hope that's what he does. And it's like a nice one down here. Oh, it is. That's a really good one. That's a, that's a pretty good one. I got to say. Um... Kane, uh, maybe I think Kane is kind of saying right now that like he's only looking inside, because if he had any sort of expectation for an outside pitch, uh, like I think the way that Kane just took that one, because that's a really, really, really tempting one, tells me that if this was a fastball instead, Kane would have just swung or actually just taken that one and would have been strike three, because he's only looking inside corner I think at this point. So with that information, yes, yeah, stay away, throw a fastball there. Yes, I love that idea. I love that idea because, again, Kane gives you the information like, look, that's a really nice slider, and I didn't bite for it. So that means I would have taken a fastball in that same spot. Uh, oh, he just tugged it, and he's upset. So now it's 3-2. and two. Man, this is a really tough pitch call because Kane, is he going to adjust his approach? Because you just threw two, two pitches away. Is Lorenzo Kane going to adjust his approach to from inside to going away? If I'm Wheeler, I'm going back inside because... Kane has not hit it effectively yet. Uh, he fouled off one and swung and missed on another. Make him beat me there right now. Make him beat me there. So I'm, I'm going back inside. Let's see. And he did it and Kane was ready for it. Ah! So, okay. So this is, and this is the thing that I was getting at before too, right? You actually want this here because it's down. It's down here. This is easier for Kane to get to. Think about it. When it's when it's, essentially this is a farther bat travel than it is up here, right? Like um, like it's easier to get the barrel to this than uh, you can swing later to get to this than you are over here. So this pitch is higher up. Um, he gets Kane, but because it's lower here, and that's kind of where he was looking ever since that 98 miles per hour fast mile per hour fastball that he missed. Uh, this is an easier hit to hit one. Three, two. Ah. Yeah, pretty much tells me, like, yep, you should have been out here, or you should have just thrown another slider for a strike. All right. Live and learn. Live and learn. Uh, all right. So, this is uh, Garcia. Now you're going back inside here, it looks like, with a man on first. And there is that spot again. I, I, It's interesting. Like, this is kind of where Wheeler is consistent. He's missed a couple, I mean, at least in this, this inning farther in over here if he can get more up here he'll have more success well i mean he has success here he's at 108 pitches and like it's a complete game shut up but you know what i'm saying i'm nitpicky that's a good one this is a good pitch and that's a really good job by garcia to turn on that it, it pretty much tells me right now that the brewers are as a club like the hitters they all talk to each other he's saying look he's peppering us inside with heaters we have to cheat on them um, that's what we saw with Kane. That's what we see here with Garcia. And he gets a single. Oh, man. And I love this. They let Wheeler finish this game at 109. And I think he's not losing his command or anything like that. It's just that the, this is the game of chess that happens between... I, I mean, I hate saying it like that. But this is the psychological battle between the pitcher and the hitter. They, they make adjustments. You make adjustments. And you go back and forth. And Nick picking. Oh, I love that. Sorry. This, that's Twitch chat. Of course, you should be joining me on Twitch while doing that. Um, Thank you, Kyle Stanzel. So now against a lefty, it's a different approach, right? He just kind of 
showcase righties, they're they're expecting the pitches inside. I think with lefties, actually, Wheeler can dance a bit better in and out. Uh, so with a with a, sh- uh, a slap sitter like Colton Wong, like I think Wong is looking for a high heater now to push into left field. I would be trying to jam him up and in. And you actually can see, I think, I think he actually caught uh, Wong. This is Wong approaching in, leaning in. Like, look at that step. He is expecting something away. This is body language that I think Wheeler can take advantage of. of imagine this. Like, imagine this lean, and the pitch actually ends up here. Obviously, you're going to say, no, it is away, so that's why he is leaning. But I think he is telling information that he's actually looking away and this is a ball that he wisely took and he got uh he got punished for no good reason if i'm wheeler i'm going up and in now that's enough body language for me actually i I think i just avoid away now oh that's a good slider that's a good slider i know it's like been in the wheelhouse and everything he felt felt off far but that's a strike and i think after the fastball away you got it inside you threw it in the zone. You changed the speeds. You got the foul ball. Way out in front. Good. You got your second strike. Now I throw a fastball up. Here. Get it here. No, he was able to hit that because he's looking away. He's looking away. I want, the, I want this up here. Get it up and in. Ah. He's trying to get that slider, by the way. That's a 93 mile per hour slider. He's trying to jam him in, which is, I think, fine. Totally a fine pitch call. Uh, he just missed this one, and that's never going to be sh- that's never going to be swung at because this starts away here and comes back, and Wong knows this isn't going to come back. Throw this up here, fastball, please. He's giving him too much time by throwing it up and away. Like away is allowing Wong to foul these off. Like, this is normally a pitch if you swing at, you're going to miss it. But because, like, he's fouling this off, he's getting decent contact on it. Uh, oh, man, there's got to be a better better frame. See, look look at this. Look how far out his bat is. Like, this is not end of the bat. Wong is, is, is cheating on the outside corner to get to this. You know, he's wrapping the bat around it. You have to jam him here to, to take advantage of this. Yes, and there you go. Oh, oh, that was much better. I'm actually really impressed that Wong got this. But this is off the handle of the bat. This is this is much. This is off the barrel. Like this was where it was on the previous pitch that he just missed. This one is much closer to the hands. That's a good piece of hitting from Wong. Good timing. I, uh, but this is a much better pitch, and you almost got a double play on it. Honestly, slider now. Keep him off balance. Yeah, slider, but try to do backdoor. I don't know if I like that call. But yeah, he wasn't going to. No, that's, that's way too close. I like the slider again here, but just maybe get it inside. Fastball, okay. All right. That, that's. I, I mean, I think everything. every one of the swing planes were a bit high, and then you did go down low. I. So there's your out. I mean, Wheeler grinded that, and that was a good at-bat from Wong. Oh, you're not, you're not pulling him. Good. I love it. So big man Vogelbach now. Um, as you got through Wong, good job, good job there, Wheeler. I uh, you can probably imagine him trying to jam him, or I mean, I would think this is a slider. I mean, man on second, big man, you throw a breaking ball typically. Oh, he jammed him with a cutter inside. Is this it? Love it. So here we go. So that's that's the rule of thumb: is big man. Uh, you don't throw heaters, especially in a man in scoring position. You make you beat them. Just in general, big men, better at fastballs than their secondary stuff. Going to be more aggressive because there's a man in second and they want to knock them in. They don't want to get to two strikes as they often strike out and stuff, whatever. They want to swing right away. So, Vogelbach's looking heater. You throw it up. And this is this looks like a fastball up and in. That Vogelbach's like, I'm ready for it for some reason. I mean, that's, that's a bad swing. It's just not, It's just not the swing you should have made. But uh, and there you go, Zach Wheeler completes it. So I, uh, so there you have it. That's how Zach Wheeler attacked the Brewers. Uh, you understand kind of every single batter versus pitcher moment, and like every single pitch, it's not luck. It's not just throw the ball. 
There is so much going on and so much information. And I hope this video highlighted how Zach Wheeler showcased good fastball command and worked with that slider to get the Brewers out uh, yesterday for that complete game shutout. Um, but that's going to do it for today. So as always, may your babas be low and your strikeouts high.